the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of Yahweh, it came to pass that Yahweh spoke to Yahshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I do give to them, to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given to you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses. So I will be with you, and I will not fail you nor forsake you. Be strong. And of a good courage, for to this people shall you divide for an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be you strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For Yahweh your Elohim is with you wherever you go. And then Yahshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare food, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan, to go in to possess the land which Yahweh your Elohim gives you to possess. And to the Reubenites and to the Godites, and to half the half-tribe of Manasseh spoke Yahshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses the servant of Yahweh commanded you, saying, Yahweh your Elohim has given you rest, and has given you this land, your wives. Your little ones and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of Jordan. But you shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them, until Yahweh have given your brethren rest, as he's given to you. And they also have possessed the land which Yahweh your Elohim gives them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy, which Moses, Yahweh's servant, gave you on this side of Jordan, toward the sun rising. And they answered Yahshua, saying, All that you command us to do, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. According as we have listened to Moses in all things, so will we listen to you. Only Yahweh, your Elohim, be with you, as he was with Moses. And whosoever he is that does rebel against your commandment and will not listen to your words and all that you command him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 2. And Yahshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, even to Jericho. And they went and came to a harlot's house, who was named Rahab, and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in here to tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to you, which are entered into your house, for they are come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men, and hid them, and said this, Well, there came men to me, but I do not know where they were come from. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, and when it was dark, that the men went out. Now where the men went, I do not know. Chase after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and had hit them with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan to the fords. And as soon as they which chased after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came to them upon the roof, and she said to the men, I know that Yahweh has given you the land, and that your terror has fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we've heard how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites, and 
that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For Yahweh, your Elohim, he is Elohim in heaven above and in earth beneath. Therefore I beg you, swear to me by Yahweh, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token, and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, Our life for yours, if you utter not this our business, and it shall be when Yahweh has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with you. And then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said to them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterward you may go your way. And the men said to her, We will be blameless of this your oath which you have made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which you did let us down by, and you shall bring your father and your mother and your brethren and all your father's household home to you. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of your house to the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if you utter this our business, then we will be quit of your oath, which you have made us to swear. And she said, According to your own words, so be it. And she sent them away. And they departed, and she bound the car scarlet line in the window. And they went and came to the mountain, and stayed there three days, until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but did not find them. And so the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Yahshua the son of Nun and told him all the things that had befallen them. And they said to Yahshua, Truly Yahweh has delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 3. And Yahshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass, after three days, that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of Yahweh your Elohim, and the priests the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and follow after it. And yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Do you not come near it? that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. And Yahshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow Yahweh will do wonders among you. And Yahshua spoke to the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over in front of the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went in front of the people. And Yahweh said to Yahshua, This day, will I begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And you shall command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. And Yahshua said to the children of Israel, Come forth and hear the words of Yahweh your Elohim. And Joshua said, by this you shall know that the living El is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from in front of you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites, the Perizzites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Look, the Ark of the Covenant of the Sovereign of all the earth crosses over in front of you into Jordan. Now therefore, take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man, and it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that carry the ark of, the, of Yahweh and the sovereign of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass, when the people left from their tents to cross over Jordan, the priests carrying the ark of the covenant in front of the people, 
And as they that carried the ark were come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bore the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overflowed all his banks at the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood, rose up on a heap very far from the city Adam, that is beside Ezeritan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off, and the people crossed over right against Jericho. And the priests that carried the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan River. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. End of chapter. Yahshua chapter 4. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that Yahweh spoke to Yahshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, one of every tribe a man, and command them, saying, Take you thence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priests' bare feet stood firm, twelve stones, and you shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. And then Yahshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man. And Yahshua said to them, Cross over in front of the ark of Yahweh your Elohim into the midst of Jordan, and take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That this may be a sign among you, that when your fa children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What does it mean by these stones? Then you shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did as Yahshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of the Jordan, as Yahweh commanded to Yahshua according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel and carried them over with them to the place where they lodged and laid them down there. And Yahshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan in the place where the feet of the priests which bore the ark of the covenant stood and they are there to this day. For the priests which carried the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished that Yahweh commanded Yahshua to speak to the people according to all that Moses commanded Yahshua. And the people hasted and crossed over. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean crossed over, that the ark of Yahweh crossed over, and the priests in the presence of the people, and the children of Reuben, and the children of God, and half the tribe of Manasseh crossed over, armed in front of the children of Israel, as Moses spoke to them. About 40,000 prepared for war crossed over in front of Yahweh to battle to the plains of Jericho. And on that day Yahweh magnified Yahshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. And Yahweh spoke to Yahshua, saying, Command the priests that carry the ark of the testimony, that they come up out of Jordan. Yahshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come up out of Jordan. And it came to pass, when the priests that carried the ark of the covenant of Yahweh were come up out of the midst of Jordan, the soles of the priest's feet were lifted up onto the dry land that the waters of Jordan returned to their place and flowed over all his banks as before. And the people that came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal in the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of Jordan did Yahshua pitch in Gilgal. And he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan River on dry land. For Yahweh your Elohim dried up the waters of Jordan from in front of you until you were crossed over, as Yahweh your Elohim did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from in front of us until we were gone over. And that all the people of the earth might know the hand of Yahweh, that it is mighty, that you might fear Yahweh your Elohim forever. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 5. And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that Yahweh had dried up the waters of Jordan 
from in front of the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted, and neither was their spirit in them any more, because of the children of Israel. And at that time Yahweh said to Yahshua, Make sharp knives, and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Yahshua made him sharp knives, and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Yahshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt that were males. Even all the men of war died in the wilderness along the way after they came out of Egypt. And now all the people that came out were circumcised. But all the people that were born in the wilderness along the way as they came forth out of Egypt, they had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness until all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of Yahweh to whom Yahweh swore that he would not show them the land which Yahweh swore to their fathers that he would give us a land that flows with milk and honey. And their children he raised up in their stead them Yahshua circumcised for they were uncircumcised, because they did not, had not circumcised them along the way. And it came to pass, when they had done circumcising all the people, that they had stayed in their places in the camp till they were whole. And Yahweh said to Yahshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off of you. And for this reason the name of the place is called Gilgal to this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month that evening in the plains of Jericho. And they did, did eat of the old corn of the land on the next day after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the selfsame day. And the manna ceased on the next day after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to pass, when Yahshua was near Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over by him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Yahshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but as captain of the host of Yahweh am I now come. And Yahshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said to him, What does my master say to his servant? And the captain of Yahweh's host said to Yahshua, Loosen your shoes from off your foot, for the place whereupon you stand is holy. And Yahshua did so. End of chapter. Yahshua chapter 6. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And Yahweh said to Yahshua, See, I have given into your hand Jericho and the king of it and the mighty men of valor and you shall come past the city all you men of war and go round about the city once this you shall do six days and seven priests shall carry before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns and the seventh day you shall come past the city seven times and the priests shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight in front of him. And Yahshua the son of Nun called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests carry seven trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark of Yahweh. And he said to the people, Pass on, and encircle the city, and let him that is armed go on before the, in front of the ark of Yahweh. And it came to pass, when Yahshua had spoken to the people, that the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on in front of Yahweh and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of Yahweh followed them. And the armed men went in front of the priests that blew with the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the ark the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Yahshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day that I bid you shout. Then you shall shout. And so the ark of Yahweh compassed the city, going around it once, and they came into the camp and stayed in the camp. 
And Yahshua rose up early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of Yahweh, and seven priests carrying seven trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark of Yahweh went on continually and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went in front of them, but the rear guard came after the ark of Yahweh, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned to the camp, and so they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priests blew with the trumpets, that Yahshua said to the people, Shout, for Yahweh has given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, it and all that are in it to Yahweh. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make yourselves accursed, when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated to Yahweh. They shall come into the treasury of Yahweh. And so the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight in front of him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and donkey with the edge of the sword. But Yahshua had said to the two men that spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out from there the woman and all that she has as you swore unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had, and they brought out all her kindred and left them outside the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire, in all that was in it, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of Yahweh. And Yahshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had, and she dwelt in Israel to this day because she hid the messengers which Yahshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Yahshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man in front of Yahweh that rises up and builds this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation of it in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. And so Yahweh was with Yahshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 7. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing, for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zavdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Yehuda, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of Yahweh was kindled against the children of Israel. And Yahshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth -Avon, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai, and they returned to Yahshua and said to him, Don't let all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor there, for they are but a few. And so there went up there of the people about three thousand men, and they fled in front of the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty-six men, for they chased them from in front of the gate even to Shevarim, and smote them in the going down for this reason the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Yahshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face in front of the ark of Yahweh until the evening he and the elders of Israel and put dust on their heads. And Yahshua said, Alas, O sovereign Yahweh, for what reason have you at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan? Oh, Yahweh, what shall I say when Israel turns their backs in front of their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what will you do to your great name? And Yahweh said to Yahshua, Get up. For what reason do you lie on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and they have also stolen and dissembled as well. And they have put it even among their own stuff. 
For this reason, the children of Israel could not stand in front of their enemies, but turned their backs in front of their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, unless you destroy the accursed thing from among you. Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus says Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of you, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be. The tribe which Yahweh takes shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which Yahweh shall take shall come by households, and the household which Yahweh shall take shall come man by man, and it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of Yahweh, and because he has wrought folly in Israel. So Yahshua rose up early in the morning, and brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe of Yehuda was taken. And he brought the family of Yehuda. And he took the family of the Zarhites. And he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man. And Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Yehuda, was taken. And Yahshua said to Achan, My son, give, I pray you, honor to Yahweh Elohim of Israel, and make confession to him, and tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Yahshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against Yahweh Elohim of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and two hundred shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, I coveted them and took them, and they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. And so Yahshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it, and they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them to Yahshua and to all the children of Israel and laid them out in front of Yahweh. And Yahshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his donkeys and his sheep and his tent and all that he had and they brought them to the valley of Achor. And Yahshua said, Why have you troubled us? Yahweh shall trouble you this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones to this day. And so Yahweh turned from the fierceness of his anger. And for this reason the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor to this day. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 8. And Yahweh said to Yahshua, Fear not, neither be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and rise up and go to Ai. See, I have given into your hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land, and you shall do to Ai and her king as you did to Jericho and her king. Only the spoil of it and the cattle of it you shall take for a prey to yourselves. Lay an ambush for the city behind it. And so Yahshua rose and all the people of war, to go up against Ai. And Yahshua chose out 30,000 mighty men of valor and spent them away by night. And he commanded them, saying, You shall lie in wait against the city, behind the city. Do not go very far from the city, but you shall all be ready. And I and all the people that are with me will approach to the city, and it shall come to pass when they come out against us as at the first, that we will run before them for they will come out after us. Till we have drawn them from the city, for they will say, They run in front of us as at the first, therefore we will flee before them. Then you shall rise up from the ambush and seize upon the city, for Yahweh your Elohim will deliver it into your hand. And it shall be, when you have taken the city, you shall set the city on fire according to the commandment of Yahweh, shall you do. See, I have commanded you. And Yahshua therefore sent them forth. And they went to lie in ambush and stayed between Bethel and Ai on the west side of Ai. But Yahshua lodged that night amongst the people. And Yahshua rose up early in the morning and numbered the people and went up, he and the elders of Israel, in front of the people to Ai. And all the people, even the people of war that were with him, went up and drew near and came in front of the city and 
pitched their tents on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between them and Ai. And he took about five thousand men and set them to lie in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the city. And when they had set the people, even all the host that was on the north of the city, and their liars in wait on the west of the city, Yahshua went that night into the midst of the valley. And it came to pass, when the king of Ai saw, that they hasted and rose up early, and the men of the city went out against Israel to battle, he and all his people at a time appointed in front of the plain. But he did not know that there were liars in ambush against him behind the city. And Yahshua and all Israel made as if they were beaten in front of them, and ran away by the way of the wilderness. And all the people that were in Ai were called together to chase after them, and they chased after Yahshua and were drawn away from the city. And there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel that did not go out after Israel, and, and they left the city open and chased after Israel. And Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out the spear that is in your hand toward Ai, for I will give it into your hand. And Yahshua stretched out the spear that he had in his hand toward the city, and the ambush arose quickly out of their place, and they ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand, and they entered into the city and took it, and hasted and set the city on fire. And when the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven, and they had no power to run this way or that way, and the people that ran to the wilderness turned back on, upon the pursuers. And when Yahshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended, then they turned again and slew the men of Ai. And the other issued out of the city against them, so they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side, and they smote them, so that they let none of them remain or escape. And the king of Ai they took alive and brought him to Yeshua. And it came to pass, when Israel had made an end of killing all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness where they had chased them, and when they were all fallen on the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all the Israelites were returned to Ai and smote it with the edge of the sword. And so it was that all that fell that day, both of men and women, were twelve thousand, even all the men of Ai. For Yahshua did not draw his hand back by, in which he stretched out the spear until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the cattle and the spoil of that city Israel took for a prey to themselves according to the word of Yahweh which he commanded Yahshua. And Yahshua burnt Ai and made it a heap forever, a desolation to this day. And the king of Ai he hung on a tree until evening. And as soon as the sun was down, Yahshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it at the entering of the gate of the city and raise there upon it a great heap of stones that remains to this day. And then Yahshua built an altar to Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, in Mount Ebal. As Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man has lifted up any iron. And they offered upon it burnt offerings to Yahweh and sacrificed peace offerings. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of all the children of Israel. And all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side of the ark and on that side in front of the priests, the Levites, which carried the ark of the covenant of Yahweh, as well as the stranger as he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount Gerizim and half of them over against Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of Yahweh had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded which Yahshua did not read in front of all the congregation of Israel with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversant among them. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 9. And it came to pass, when all the kings which were on this side of Jordan, in the hills and in the valleys and in all the coasts of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite and the Amorite and the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite and the Jebusite, heard that they gathered themselves together to fight with Yahshua and with Israel with one accord. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Yahshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they did work 
and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their donkeys and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up, and old shoes and clouded upon their feet and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provisions was dry and moldy. And they went to Yahshua, to the camp at Gilgal, and said to him and to the men of Israel, We've come from a far country. Now, therefore, make a league with us. And the men of Israel said to the Hivites, Perhaps you shall dwell upon us. How shall we make a league with you? And they said to Yahshua, We are just servants. And Yahshua said to them, who are you, and from where have you come? And they said to him, From a very far country your servants are come because of the name of Yahweh your Elohim. For we have heard of the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan to the Sihon, the king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. For this reason our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take food with you for the journey and go meet them. And say to them, We are your servants, therefore now make a league with us. This, our bread, we took hot for a provision out of our houses on the day that we came forth to go to you. But now, behold, it's dry and moldy. And these bottles of wine which we filled were new. Now look, they are rent, and these are our garments, and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. And the men took of their food and did not ask counsel at the mouth of Yahweh. And Yahshua made peace with them and made a pact with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swore to them. And it came to pass at the end of three days after they had made a pact with them that they heard that they were their neighbors and that they dwelt among them. And the children of Israel journeyed and came to their cities on the third day. And now their cities were Gibeon and Shephira and Beeroth and Kirgathjerim. And the children of Israel smote them not because the princes of the congregation had sworn to them by Yahweh Elohim of Israel. And all the congregation murmured against the princes. But all the princes said to all the congregation, We've sworn to them by Yahweh Elohim of Israel. Therefore we may not touch them. This we will do to them. We will even let them live, lest wrath be upon us because of the oath which we swore to them. And the princes said to them, let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water to all the congregation, as the princes had promised them. And Yahshua called for them, and he spoke to them, saying, For what reason have you beguiled us, saying we are from very far away from you, when you dwell among us? Now, therefore, you are cursed, and there shall be none of you freed from being bondmen and hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of my Elohim. And they answered Yahshua and said, because it was certainly told your servants how that Yahweh your Elohim commanded his ser servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from in front of you. For this reason we were sore afraid of our lives because of you and have done this thing. And now, behold, we are in your hand. As it seems good and right to you to do to us, do it. And so he did to them and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel so that they did not kill them. And Yahshua made them that day hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of Yahweh, even to this day, in the place which he should choose. End of chapter. Chapter 10. And now it came to pass, when Adoni Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Yahshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all the men of it were mighty. And for this reason, Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, sent to Hoham, king of Hebron, and to Piram, king of Yarmuth, and to Yophia, king of Lachish, and to Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come to me and help me, that we may smite Gibeon. For it has made peace with Yahshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Yarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent to Yahshua to the camp to Gilgal, saying, 
Do not slack your hand from your servants. Come to us quickly and save us and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Yahshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And Yahweh said to Yahshua, Do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand, and there shall not a man of them stand before you. Yahshua therefore came to them suddenly, and went up from Gilgal all night, and Yahweh discomfited them before Israel, and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, and chased them along the way that goes up to Bethoron, and smote them to Azekah and to Makeda. It came to pass, as they fled from in front of Israel, and were in the going down to Bethoron, that Yahweh cast down great stones from heaven upon them to Azekah, and they died. There were more which died with hailstones than those whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. And then spoke Yahshua to Yahweh in the day when Yahweh delivered up the Amorites in the front of the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still upon Gibeon, and you, moon, in the valley of Achalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Yasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day, and there was no day like that before it or after it, that Yahweh listened to the voice of a man, for Yahweh fought for Israel. And Yahshua returned in all Israel with him to the camp to Gilgal. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Makeda. And it was told to Yahshua, saying, The five kings are found hidden in a cave at Makeda. Yahshua said, Roll great stones on the mouth of the cave and set men near it to keep them there. And do not stay, but pursue after your enemies and smite the hindmost of them. Do not let them enter into their cities. For Yahweh your Elohim has delivered them into your hand. And it came to pass, when Yahshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them, and with a very great slaughter, till they were consumed, that the rest which remained of them entered into fenced cities. And all the people returned to the camp to Yahshua at Makeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then said Yahshua, Open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings to me out of the cave. And they did so and brought forth those five kings to him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Yarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass, when they brought out those kings to Yahshua, that Yahshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the captains of the men of war which went with him, Come near and put your feet on the necks of these kings. And they came near, put their feet on the necks of them. And Yahshua said to them, Do not fear nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for in this manner shall Yahweh do to all your enemies against whom you fight. And afterward, Yahshua smote them and slew them and hung them on five trees, and they were hanging on the trees until the evening. And it came to pass at the time of the going down of the sun. Yahshua commanded, and they took them down off the trees and cast them into the cave in which they had been hid and laid great stones in the cave's mouth, which remain till this very day. And that day Yahshua took Makeda and smote it with the edge of the sword, and the king of it he utterly destroyed them and all the souls that were in it. He let none remain, and he did to the king of Makeda as he did to the king of Jericho. Then Yahshua passed from Makeda and all Israel with him to Libna and fought against Libna. And Yahweh delivered it also and the king of it into the hand of Israel, and he smote it with the edge of the sword and all the souls that were in it. He let none remain in it, but did to the king there of it as he did to the king of Jericho. And Yahshua passed from Libna and all Israel with him to Lachish and encamped against it and fought against it. And Yahweh delivered Lachish to the hand of Israel which took it on the second day and smote it with the edge of the sword and all the souls that were in it, according to all that he had done to Libna. Then Horam, king of Gezer, came up to help Lachish, and Yahshua smote him and his people until he had left him none remaining. And from Lachish, Yahshua passed to Eglon and all Israel with him, and they encamped against it and fought against it. And they took it on that day and smote it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls that were in it he utterly destroyed that day according to all that he had done to Lachish. And Yahshua went up from Eglon and all Israel with him to Hebron, and they fought against it. 
And they took it, and smote it with the edge of the sword, and the king of it, and all the cities of it, and all the souls that were in it. And he left none remaining, according to all that he had done to Eglon, but destroyed it utterly, and all the souls that were in it. And Yahshua returned, and all Israel with him to Debir, and fought against it. And he took it, and the king of it, and all the cities of it, and they smote them with the edge of the sword, and utterly destroyed all the souls that were in them. He left none remaining. As he had done to Hebron, so he did to Debir, and to the king of it, as he had done also to Libna, and to her king. And so Yahshua smote all the country of the hills, and of the south, and of the vale, and of the springs, and all their kings. He left none remaining, but utterly destroyed all that breathed, as Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, commanded. And Yahshua smote them from Kadesh Barnea, even to Gaza, and all the country of Goshen, even to Gibeon. And all these kings and their land did Yahshua take at one time, because Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, fought for Israel. And Yahshua returned in all Israel with him to the camp to Gilgal. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 11. And it came to pass, when Shabin, king of Hazor, had heard those things, that he sent to Shobab, king of Medon, and to the king of Shimron, and to the king of Asphath, and to the kings that were on the north of the mountains, and of the plains south of Shinaroth, and in the valley, and in the borders of Dor on the west, and to the Canaanite on the east and on the west, and to the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Jebusite in the mountains, and to the Hivite under Hermon in the land of Mizpah. And they went out, they and all their hosts with them, much people, even as the sand that is upon the seashore in multitude, with horses and chariots, very many, and when all these kings were met together, they came and pitched together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. And Yahweh said to Yahshua, Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time I will deliver them all up slain before Israel, and you shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. And so Yahshua came, and all the people of war with him, against them by the waters of Merom suddenly, and they fell upon them, and Yahweh delivered them into the hand of Israel, who smote them, and chased them to great Zidon, and to Mizrafothimam, unto the valley of Mizpah eastward, and they smote them, and they left none of them remaining. And Yahshua did to them as Yahweh bid him, and he hamstrung their horses, and burnt their chariots with fire. And Yahshua at that time turned back and took Hazor and smote the king of it with the sword, for Hazor before time was the head of all those kingdoms. And they smote all the souls that were in it with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying. There was not any left to breathe, for he burnt Hazor with fire. And all the cities of those kings and all the kings of them did Yahshua take and smote them with the edge of the sword, and he utterly destroyed them as Moses the servant of Yahweh commanded. But as for the cities that stood still in their strength, Israel did not burn any of them, except for Hazor only. Yahshua did burn that city. And all the spoil of these cities and the cattle the children of Israel took for a prey for themselves. But every man they smote with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them, neither did they leave any to breathe. As Yahweh commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Yahshua. And so did Yahshua. He left nothing undone of all that Yahweh commanded Moses. So Yahshua took all that land and the hills and all the south country and all the land of Goshen and the valley and the plain and the mountain of Israel and the valley of the same from the Mount Halak that goes up to Seir even to Baal God in the valley of Lebanon under Mount Hermon. And all their kings he took and smote them and slew them. Yahshua made war a long time with all those kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel except for the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon. All others they took in battle. For it was of Yahweh to harden their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly and that they might have no favor, but that he might destroy them as Yahweh commanded Moses. And at that time came Yahshua and cut off the Anakim from the mountains, from Hebron, from Debir, from Anab, and from all the mountains of Yehuda, and from all the mountains of Israel. Yahshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. There was none of the Anakim left in the land of the children of Israel. Only in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod there remained. And so Yahshua took the whole land according to all that Yahweh said to Moses, and Yahshua gave it for an inheritance to Israel according to their divisions by their tribes. And the land rested from war. End of chapter. Yahshua, 
chapter 12. Now these are the kings of the land which the children of Israel smote, and possessed their land on the other side of Jehordan, toward the rising of the sun from the river Arnon to the Mount Hermon, and all the plain on the east, Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon and ruled from Aroer, which is on the bank of the river Arnon, and from the middle of the river and from half Gilead even to the river Yahok, which is the border of the children of Ammon, and from the plain to the sea of Shinaroth to the east, and to the sea of the plain, even the salt sea on the east, and the way to Beth Yeshemoth, from the south under Ashdod Pisgah. On the coast of Og, king of Bashan, which was of the remnant of the giants, which dwelt at Ashtaroth and Edre, and reigned in Mount Hermon, and in Salka, and all Bashan, to the border of the Yeshurites, and the Machahites, and half Gilead, the border of Sihon, king of Heshbon, them did Moses the servant of Yahweh and the children of Israel smite, and Moses the servant of Yahweh gave it for a possession to the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh. And these are the kings of the country which Yahshua and the king, children of Israel smote on this side of Jordan, to the west, from Baal God, in the valley of Lebanon, even to Mount Halak, that goes up to Seir, which Yahshua gave to the tribes of Israel for a possession according to their divisions, in the mountains, and in the valleys, and in the plains, and in the springs, and in the wilderness, and in the south country, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Yevizites, the king of Jericho, one, the king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, one. The king of Jerusalem, one. The king of Hebron, one. The king of Yarmuth, one. The king of Lachish, one. The king of Eglon, one. The king of Gezer, one. The king of Debir, one. The king of Gider, one. The king of Horma, one. The king of Arad, one. The king of Libna, one. The king of Adulam, one. The king of Makeda, one. The king of Bethel, one. The king of Tapua, one. The king of Hefer, one. The king of Aphek, one. The king of Lasharon, one. The king of Medon, one. The king of Hazor, one. The king of Shimram Miron, one. The king of Ashpath, one. The king of Ta'anak, one. The king of Megiddo, one. The king of Kadesh, one. The king of Jokninium of Carmel, one. The king of Dor on the coast of Dor, one. The king of the nations of Gilgal, one. The king of Terza, one. All the kings, thirty-one. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 13. Now Yahshua was old and stricken in years, and Yahweh said to him, You are old and stricken in years, and there remains yet very much land to be possessed. This is the land that yet remains. All the borders of the Philistines and all Geshure, from Sihor, which is before Egypt, even to the borders of Ekron northward, which is counted to the Canaanite, five princes of the Philistines, the Gazazites, the Ashtothites, the Eshkelonites, the Gittites, and the Ekronites, also the Avites. From the south, all the land of the Canaanites, and Mira, that is beside the Sidonians, to Aphek, to the borders of the Amorites, and the land of the Giblites, and all Lebanon, toward the sun rising, from Algod, under Mount Hermon, to entering into Hamath. All the inhabitants of the hill country, from Lebanon, to Mishrephoth Maim, and all the Sidonians, them will I drive out from in front of the children of Israel. Only you divide it by lot to the Israelites for an inheritance as I have commanded you. Now therefore, divide this land for an inheritance to the nine tribes and the half-tribe of Manasseh, with whom the Reubenites and the Gadites have received their inheritance which Moses gave them. On the other side of Jordan eastward, even as Moses the servant of Yahweh gave them, from Eroer that is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, and all the plain of Madiba to Dibon, and all the cities of Sihon, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon to the border of the children of Ammon, and Gilead, and the border of the Geshurites and the Makathites, and all Mount Hermon, and all Bashan to Salka. All the kingdom of Og in Bashan, which reigned in Ashtaroth in Edre, and who remained of the remnant of the giants, for these did Moses smite and cast them out. Nevertheless, the children of Israel expelled not the Geshurites, nor the Machathites, but the Geshurites and the Machathites dwelt among the Israelites until this day. 
Only to the tribe of Levi he gave none inheritance. The sacrifices of Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, made by fire, are their inheritance, as he said to them. And Moses gave to the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to their families. And their coast was from Eroer, that is on the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, in all the plain by Mediba, Heshbon and all her cities that are in the plain, Debon, and Bamoth Baal, and Beth Baal Meon, and Yahaza, and Kirimoth, and Mephath, and Kirgasem, and Sibma, and Zareth Shathar, and the Mount of the Valley, and Beth Peor, and Ashtoth Pisga, and Beth Yasamoth, and all the cities of the plain, and all the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon, whom Moses smote with the princes of Midian, Evi, and Rechem, and Zur, and Hur, and Reba, which were dukes of Sihon, dwelling in the country. Balaam, also the son of Beor, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with the sword among them that were slain by them. And the border of the children of Reuben was Jordan, and the border of it. This was the inheritance of the children of Reuben after their families, the cities and the villages of it. And Moses gave inheritance to the tribe of God, even to the children of God, according to their families. And their coast was Yezer, and all the tr cities of Gilead, and half the land of the children of Ammon, to Aroer, that is before Rabbah, and from Heshbon, to Ramath Mizpah, and Ebetonim, and from Mathanaim, unto the border of Debir. And in the valley, Betharam, and Beth Nimra, and Sukoth, and Zephon, the rest of the kingdom of Sihon, king of Heshbon, Jordan, and his border, even to the edge of the Sea of Shinaroth, on the other side of Jordan, eastward. This is the inheritance of the children of God after their families, the cities, and their villages. And Moses gave to the half-tribe of Manasseh, and this was the possession of the half-tribe of the children of Manasseh by their families. And their coast was from Mahanaim, all Bashan, all the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, and all the towns of Yair, which are in Bashan, threescore cities, and half Gilead, and Ashtaroth, and Edre, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan, were pertaining to the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, even to the one half of the children of Machir by their families. These are the countries which Moses did distribute for inheritance in the plains of Moab, on the other side Jordan, by Jericho eastward. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses gave not any inheritance. Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, was their inheritance, as he had said unto them. End of chapter. Joshua, chapter 14. And these are the countries which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest and Yahshua son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed for inheritance to them. By lot was their inheritance, as Yahweh commanded by the hand of Moses, for the nine tribes and for the half-tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of two tribes and a half-tribe on the other side of Jordan. But to the Levites he gave no inheritance among them. For the children of Yosef were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Therefore they gave no part to the Levites in the land except for cities to dwell in, with their suburbs for their cattle and for their substance. As Yahweh commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Yehudah came to Yahshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Yaphuneth, and the Kenazite, said to him, You know the thing that Yahweh said to Moses, the man of Elohim, concerning me and you and Kadesh Barnea. I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of Yahweh, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed Yahweh, my Elohim. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereupon where your feet have trod shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you've wholly followed Yahweh, my Elohim. And now, behold, Yahweh has kept me alive, as he said, these forty-five years, even since Yahweh spoke this word to Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, 
as my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, give me this mountain, whereof Yahweh spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, Yahweh will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as Yahweh said. And Yahshua blessed him, and gave to Caleb, the son of Yahuna, Hebron, for an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Yafuna, the Kenazite, to this day, because that he wholly followed Yahweh, Elohim of Israel. And the name of Hebron before was Kiryasptharba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 15. This, then, was the lot of the tribe of the children of Yehuda by their families, to the border of Edom, the wilderness of Zin, southward, was the uttermost part of the south coast. And their south border was from the shore of the Salt Sea, from the bay that looks southward. And it went out the south side to Maal Hekravim, and passed along to Zin, and ascended up on the south side to Kadesh Barnea, and passed along to Hezron, and went up to Adar, and fetched a compass to Karkah. And from there it passed toward Asmon and went out to the river of Egypt, and the goings out of that coast were at the sea. This shall be your south coast. And the east border, the Salt Sea, to the land of Jordan. And their border in the north quarters was from the bay of the sea at the uttermost part of Jordan. And the border went up to Bethogla, and passed along by the north of Betharaba. And the border went up to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. And the border went up toward Debir, from the valley of Achor, and so northward, looking toward Gilgal, that is before the going up to Adumim, which is on the south side of the river. And the border passed toward the waters of Enshemesh, and the goings out of it were at Enrogel. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom, to the south side of the Jebusite, the same as Jerusalem. And the border went up to the top of the mountain that lies before the valley of Hinnom westward, which is at the end of the valley of the giants northward. And the border was drawn from the top of the hill to the fountains of the waters of Nephtoa, and went out to the cities of Mount Ephron. And the border was drawn to Baalah, which is Kirjashiram. And the border compassed from Baalah westward to Mount Seir, and passed along to the side of Mount Jiram, which is Sheshalon, on the north side, and went down to Beth Shemesh, and passed on to Timnah. And the border went out to the side of Ekron northward, and the border was drawn to Shikron, and passed along to Mount Baala, and went out to Chabnil. And the goings out of the border were at the sea. And the west border was to the great sea, and the coast of it. This is the coast of the children of Yehuda round about according to their families. And to Caleb, the son of Yefuna, he gave a part among the children of Yehuda, according to the commandment of Yahweh to Yahshua, the city of Arba, the father of Anak. The city is Hebron. And Caleb drove out from there the three sons of Anak, Sheshai and Ahiman and Talmai, the children of Anak. And he went up there to the inhabitants of Debir. And the name of Debir before was Kirjashifer. And Caleb said, He that smites Kirjashifer and takes it, to him I will give Aksa, my daughter, to wife. And Othniel, the son of Kinaz, the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, for a wife. And it came to pass, as she came to him, that she moved him to ask of her father for a field. And she got off of her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What are you doing? And she answered, Give me a blessing, for you've given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Yehuda according to their families. And the uttermost cities of the tribe of the children of Yehuda toward this coast of Edom southward are Kabziel and Eder and Jagur and Kina and Dimona and Ada and Kadesh and Hazor and Ethnan, Ziph and Tilem and Bialoth and Hazor, Hadata, Kirios and Hezron, which is Hazor, Amam and Shema and Molada and Hazar Gada, and Heshmon, and Beth Pele, and Hazar Shua, and Beer Sheba, and Bish Josha, Baala, and Aim, and Azem, and El Tolad, and Shezil, and Horma, 
and Ziklag, and Madmana, and Sansana, and Lebaoth, and Shilhim, and Ain, and Rimon, all the cities twenty-nine with their villages. And in the valley, Eshtaul, and Zoria, and Ashna, and Zanoa, and Enganim, Tapua, and Enam, Yarmuth, and Adulam, Soko, and Azika, and Sharaim, and Adithaim, and Gedera, and Gederothaim, fourteen cities with their villages, Zinan, and Hadasha, and Migdalgad, and Dilian, and Mishpa, and Yokthiel, Lakish, and Boskath, and Eglon, and Kabon, and Lamam, and Kithlish, and Gideroth, and Bethlegon, and Naama, and Makeda, sixteen cities with their villages, Libna, and Ether, and Eshon, and Jephtha, and Ashna, and Nizib, and Keila, and Aksib, and Marisha, nine cities with their villages, Ekron with her towns and her villages, from Ekron even to the sea, all that lay near Ashdod with their villages, Ashdod with her towns and her villages, Gaza with her towns and her villages, to the river of Egypt and the great sea and the border of it, and in the mountains, Shamir and Chakir and Soko and Dana and Kiryashana, which is Debir, and Anab and Eshtemo and Anim and Goshen and Holon and Gilo, eleven cities with their villages, Arab, Duma, Eshian, and Yanum, and Batapua, and Afika, and Humta, and Kiryatharba, which is Hebron, and Zior, nine cities with their villages, Maon, Carmel, and Zif, and Juta, and Yezrael, and Joktim, and Zanoa, Cain, Gibeah, Timna, ten cities with their villages, Halul, Bethur, and Gidor, and Maharoth, and Bethenoth, and El Tekon, six cities with their villages, Kiryath Baal, which is Kiryath Yiram, and Rabbah, two cities with their villages. In the wilderness, Beth Rabbah, Midin, and Sikaka, and Nibshan, and the city of Salt, and Engedi, six cities with their villages. As for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Yehuda could not drive them out, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Yehuda at Jerusalem to this day. End of chapter. Yeshua, chapter 16. And the lot of the children of Yosef fell from Jordan by Jericho to the water of Jericho on the east to the wilderness that goes up from Jericho throughout Mount Bethel, and goes out from Bethel to Luz, and passes along to the border of Arki to Acheroth, and goes down westward to the coast of Yafleti, to the coast of Bethoron, the lower, and to Gezer, and the goings out of it are at the sea, and so the children of Yosef, Manasseh, and Ephraim took their inheritance, and the border of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, was in this manner. The border of their inheritance on the east side was Ataroth Adar, unto Bethoron, the upper. And the border went out toward the sea to Mechmetha, on the north side. And the border went out eastward to, to Ta'anath Shiloh, and passed by it on the east to Yahona. And it went down from Yahona to Ataroth and to Naaroth, and came to Jericho, and went out at Jordan. And the border went out from Tapua, westward, to the river Cana. And the goings out of it were at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim by their families. And the separate cities for the children of Ephraim were among the inheritance of the children of Manasseh, all the cities with their villages. And they did not drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwell among the Ephraimites to this day, and serve under tribute. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 17. There was also a lot for the tribe of Manasseh, for he was the firstborn of Yosef. For Machir, the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead, because he was a man of war, therefore he had Gilead and Bashan. There was also a lot for the rest of the children of Manasseh by their families, for the children of Abiezar, and for the children of Helech, and for the children of Ezreel, for the children of Shechem, for the children of Hefer, and for the children of Shamida, these were the male children of Manasseh, the son of Yosef, by their families. But Zelophehat, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, had no sons but daughters. And these are the names of his daughters, Mala, and Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirzah. 
And they came near before Eleazar the priest, and before Yahshua the son of Nun, and before the princes, saying, Yahweh commanded Moses to give us an inheritance amongst our brethren. Therefore, according to the commandment of Yahweh, he gave them an inheritance among the brethren of their father. And there fell ten portions to Manasseh, beside the land of Gilead and Bashan, which were on the other side of Jordan. Because the daughters of Manasseh had an inheritance among his sons, and the rest of Manasseh's sons had the land of Gilead. And the coast of Manasseh was from Asher to Michmetha, that lies in front of Shechem. And the border went along on the right-hand side up to the inhabitants of Entapua. Manasseh had the land of Tapua, but Tapua on the border of Manasseh belonged to the children of Ephraim. And the coast descended to the river Cana, southward of the river. These cities of Ephraim were among the cities of Manasseh. The coast of Manasseh also was on the north side of the river, and the outgoings of it were at the sea. Southward it was Ephraim's, and northward it was Manasseh's, and the sea is his border. And they met together in Asher on the north, and in Issachar on the east. In Manasseh had in Issachar and in Asher Bethsian and her towns, and Ibliam and her towns, and the inhabitants of Dor and her towns, and the inhabitants of Endor and her towns, and the inhabitants of Taanach and her towns, and the inhabitants of Megiddo and her towns, even three countries. Yet the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities, but the Canaanites would dwell in that land. And yet it came to pass, when the children of Israel were waxed strong, that they put the Canaanites to tribute, but did not utterly drive them out. And the children of Yosef spoke to Yahshua, saying, Why have you given me but one lot and one portion to inherit it, seeing I am a great people, for as much as Yahweh has blessed me? And Yahshua answered them, If you were a great people, then get you up to the wood country and cut down for yourself there in the land of the Perizzites and of the giants, if Mount Ephraim is too narrow for you. And the children of Yosef said, The hill is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites that dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron, both they who were of Bethsian and her towns, and they who were of the valley of Yazreel. And Yahshua spoke to the house of Yosef, to Ephraim and to Manasseh, saying, You are a great people, and have great power. You shall not have one lot only, but the mountain shall be yours. For it is a wood, and you shall cut it down, and the outgoings of it shall be yours. For you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots, and though they are strong. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 18. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh, and set up the tabernacle of the congregation there, and the land was subdued before them. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. And Yahshua said to the children of Israel, How long are you slack to go to possess the land which Yahweh, Elohim of your fathers, has given you? Give out from among you three men for each tribe, and I will send them. And they shall rise and go through the land and describe it according to the inheritance of them, and they shall come again to me. And they shall divide it into seven parts. Yahuda shall abide in her, their coast on the south, and the house of Yosef shall abide in their coasts on the north. You shall therefore describe the land into seven parts, and bring the description here to me, that I may cast lots for you here before Yahweh our Elohim. But the Levites have no part among you, for the priesthood of Yahweh is their inheritance, and God and Reuben and half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance beyond Jordan on the east, which Moses the servant of Yahweh gave them. And the men arose and went away, and Yahshua charged them that went to describe the land, saying, Go and walk through the land and describe it, and come again to me, that I may here cast lots for you before Yahweh in Shiloh. And the men went and passed through the land, and described it by cities into seven parts in a book, and came again to Yahshua at, to the host at Shiloh, and Yahshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before Yahweh. And there Yahshua divided the land to the children of Israel according to their divisions. And a lot of the tribe of the children of Binyamin came up according to their families, and the coast of their lot came forth between the children of Yahuda and the children of Yosef. And their border on the north side was from Jordan, and the border went up to the side of Jericho on the north side, and went up through the mountains westward, and the goings out of it were at the wilderness of beth -Avon. And the border went over from there toward Luz, to the side of Luz, which is Bethel, southward. And the border descended to ataroth -Adar, near the hill that lies on the south side of the lower Beth-Oron. 
And the border was drawn from there, and compassed the corner of the sea southward, from the hill that lies before Bethoron southward. And the goings out of it were at Kirjaspaal, which is Kirjashiram, a city of the chil children of Yehuda, which is the west quarter. And the south quarter was from the end of Kirjashiram, and the border went out on the west, and went out to the well of waters of Nephtoah. And the border came down to the end of the mountain that lies before the valley of the son of Hinnom which is in the valley of the giants on the north, and descended to the valley of Hinnom, to the side of Yafuzi on the south, descended to Engrogel, and was drawn from the north and went forth to Enshemesh, and went forth to Gililoth, which is over against the going up of Adumim, descended to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben, and passed along toward the side over against Ereba, northward, and went down to Ereba. And the border passed along to the side of Bethogla, northward. And the outgoings of the border were at the north bay of the Salt Sea, at the south end of Jordan. This was the south coast. And Jordan was the border of it on the east side. This was the inheritance of the children of Benjamin by the coasts of it, round about, according to their families. Now the cities of the tribe of the children of Benjamin, according to their families, were Jericho and Bethogla and the valley of Keziz and Betharabah and Zemaraim, and Bethel, and Avim, and Pera, and Ophra, and Shephar Haamonai, and Ophni, and Gaba, twelve cities with their villages, Gibeon, and Rema, and Beeroth, and Mizpah, and Shephira, and Moza, and Rikam, and Irpiel, and Terala, and Zila, Eleph, and Jabuzi, which is Jerusalem, Gibeoth, and Kiryath, fourteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Benjamin according to their families. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 19. And the second lot came forth to Simeon. For the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families and their inheritance, was within the inheritance of the children of Yehuda. And they had in their inheritance Beersheba, or Sheba, and Molada, and Hazar Shual, and Bela, and Azam, and El Tolad, and Bethul, and Horma, and Ziklag, and Beth Mark Keboth, and Hazar Shuza, and Beth Lebaoth, and Sharuhan, thirteen cities and their villages, Ain, Remon, and Ether, and Ashan, four cities and their villages, and all the villages that were round about these cities to Baal Lath Pierre, Ramoth of the south. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon according to their families. Out of the portion of the children of Yehuda was the inheritance of the children of Simeon, for the part of the children of Jehuda was too much for them. Therefore the children of Simeon had their inheritance within the inheritance of them. And the third lot came up for the children of Zebulun, according to their families, and the border of their inheritance was to Sarid. And their border went up toward the sea, and Marala, and reached to Dabasheth, and reached to the river that is before Jochnim and turned from Sarid eastward toward the sun rising to the border of Shisloth Tabor, and then goes out to Diberath, and goes up to Hyafia, and from there passes along on the east to Gitahifer, to Itaskazin, and goes out to Remon Mithoar, to Nia. And the border compasses it on the north side to Hanathon, and the outgoings of it are in the valley of Yifthahel, and Katath, and Nahalal, and Shivron, and Adala, and Bethlehem, twelve cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Zabulon, according to their families, these cities with their villages. And the fourth lot came to, uh, to Issachar, for the children of Issachar, according to their families. And their border was toward Yezreel, and Shazuloth, and Shunem, and Hapharaim, and Shion, and Ahatharath, and Rabith, and Kishion, and Abez, and Remeth, and Enganim, and Enhada, and Bathpazes, and the coast reaches to Tabor, and Shahazima, and Bethshemesh, and the outgoings of their border were at Jordan, sixteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Issachar, according to their families, the cities and their villages. And the fifth lot came out for the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families. And their border was Helka, and Hali, and Beten, and Ashpath, and Alamalek, and Ahmad, and Mishael, 
and reaches to Carmel westward and to Shehor Libnath, and turns toward the sun rising to Beth Dagon and reaches to Zebulun and to the valley of Jephthahel, toward the north side of Bethemek and Niel, and goes out to Kabul on the left hand, and Hebron and Rehob and Hamon and Cana, even to great Zidon. And then the coast turns to Ramah and to the strong city Tyre, and the coast turns to Hosah, and the outgoings of it are at the sea from the coast to Aksim. Uma also, and Aphek, and Rehob, twenty-two cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, these cities with their villages. The sixth lot came out to the children of Naphtali, for the children of Naphtali, according to their families. And their coast was from Hilef, and from Alon, to Za'ananim, and Adami, Nekeb, and Shabniel, and to Lakum, and the outgoings of it were at Jordan. And then the coast turns westward to Asnoth Tabor, and goes out from there to Hukok, and reaches out to Zebulun on the north, south side, and reaches to Asher on the west side, and to Yehuda on Jordan toward the sun rising. And the fenced cities are Zidim, Zur, and Hamath, Raqqa, Shinareth, and Adama, Rema, and Hazor, and Kadesh, and Adre, and Hazor, and Iron, and Migdalel, Horem, Bethanath, and Beth Shemesh, nineteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Naphtali according to their families, the cities and their villages. And the seventh lot came out for the tribe of the children of Don according to their families. And the coast of their inheritance was Zorah, and Eshtaul, and Urshemesh, and Sha'al Labin, and Ahalon, and Yethla, and Elon, and Timnatha, and Ekron, and Elk Tekech, and Gibbethon, and Baalath, and Yehud, and Benabarek, and Gatrimon, and Meyarkon, and Rakon, with the border before Yahu. And the coast of the children of Dan went out too small for them. Therefore the children of Dan went up to fight against Leshem, and took it, and smote it with the edge of the sword, and possessed it, and dwelt in it, and called Leshem Dan, after the name of Dan their father. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families, these cities with their villages. When they made an end of dividing the land for inheritance by their coasts, the children of Israel gave an inheritance to Yahshua, the son of Nun, among them. According to the word of Yahweh, they gave him the city which he asked, Timnath Sirah, in Mount Ephraim, and he built the city and dwelt in it. These are the inheritances which Eleazar the priest and Yahshua, the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of children of Israel, divided for an inheritance by lot in Shiloh before Yahweh at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So they made an end of dividing the country. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 20. Yahweh also spoke to Yahshua, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Appoint out for you cities of refuge, of which I spoke to you by the hand of Moses, that the slayer that kills any person unawares and unwittingly may flee there, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. And when he that does flee to one of those cities shall stand at the entering of the gate of the city and shall declare his cause in the ears of the elders of that city, they shall take him into the city to them and give him a place that he may dwell among them. And if the avenger of blood pursue after him, then they shall not deliver the slayer up into his hand, because he smote his neighbor unwittingly and did not hate him before. And he shall dwell in that city until he stand before the congregation for judgment, and until the death of the high priest shall be in those days. Then shall the slayer return and come to his own city and to his own house, to the city from where he had fled from. And they appointed Kedesh in Galilee, in Mount Naphtali, and Shechem, in Mount Ephraim, and Kiryas Arba, which is Hebron, in the mountain of Yehuda. And on the other side of Jordan, by Jericho eastward, they assigned Bezer in the wilderness upon the plain out of the tribe of Reuben, and Ramoth in Gilead out of the tribe of God, and Golan in Bashan out of the tribe of Manasseh. These were the cities appointed for all the children of Israel, 
and for the stranger that travels among them, that whosoever kills any person unaware might flee there and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood until he stood before the congregation. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 21. Then came near the heads of the fathers of the Levites to Eleazar the priest, and to Yahshua the son of Nun, and to the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. And they spoke to them at Shiloh in the land of Canaan, saying, Yahweh commanded by the hand of Moses to give us cities to dwell in with the suburbs of it for our cattle. And the children of Israel gave to the Levites out of their inheritance at the commandment of Yahweh these cities and their suburbs. And the lot came out for the families of the Kohathites. And the children of Aaron, the priest of the Levites, had by lot out of the tribe of Yehuda and out of the tribe of Simeon and out of the tribe of Benjamin, thirteen cities. And the rest of the children of Kohath had by lot out of the families of the tribe of Ephraim and out of the tribe of Don and out of the half-tribe of Manasseh, ten cities. And the children of Gershon had by lot out of the families of the tribe of Issachar and out of the tribe of Asher, and out of the tribe of Naphtali, and out of the half-tribe of Manasseh in Bashan, thirteen cities. The children of Mirari, by their families, had out of the tribe of Reuben, and out of the tribe of God, and out of the tribe of Zebulun, twelve cities. And the children of Israel gave by lot to the Levites these cities with their suburbs, as Yahweh commanded by the hand of Moses. And they gave out of the tribe of the children of Yehudah, and out of the tribe of the children of Simeon, these cities which are here mentioned by name, which the children of Aaron, being of the families of the Kohathites, who were of the children of Levi, had, for theirs was the first lot, and they gave them the city of Arba, the father of Anak, which city is Hebron, in the hill country of Yehuda, with the suburbs of it round about. But the fields of the city and the villages of it gave they to Caleb, the son of Yephunath, for his possession. This they gave to the children of Aaron, the priest Hebron, with her suburbs, to be a city of refuge for the slayer, and Libna, with her suburbs, and Yatir, with her suburbs, and Eshtemoah, with her suburbs, and Holon, with her suburbs, and Debir, with her suburbs, and Ain, with her suburbs, and Utah, with her suburbs, and Beth Shemesh, with her suburbs, nine cities out of those two tribes. And out of the tribe of Benjamin, Gibeon with her suburbs, Geba with her suburbs, Anathoth with her suburbs, and Almon with her suburbs, four cities. All the cities of the children of Aaron, the priests, thirteen cities with their suburbs. And the families of the children of Kohath, the Levites which remained of the children of Kohath, even they had the cities out of their lot out of the tribe of Ephraim. For they gave them Shechem with her suburbs in Mount Ephraim, a city of refuge for the slayer, and Gezer with her suburbs, and Kibzaim with her suburbs, and Bethoron with her suburbs, four cities. And out of the tribe of Don, Eltika with her suburbs, Gebethon with her suburbs, Aichalon with her suburbs, Gathrimon with her suburbs, four cities. And out of the half tribe of Manasseh, Tanakh with her suburbs, and Gathrimon with her suburbs, two cities. All the cities, ten with their suburbs, for the families of the, for the children of Kohath that remained. And to the children of Gershon, of the families of the Levites, out of the other half-tribe of Manasseh, they gave Golan in Bashan with her suburbs, to be a city of refuge for the slayer, and Beeshterah with her suburbs, two cities. Out of the tribe of Issachar, Kishon with her suburbs, Dibara with her suburbs, Yarmuth with her suburbs, and Ganim with her suburbs, four cities. And out of the tribe of Asher, Mishal with her suburbs, Abdon with her suburbs, Helkoth with her suburbs, and Rehob with her suburbs, four cities. And out of the tribe of Naphtali, Kadesh in Galilee with her suburbs, a city of refuge for the slayer, and Hamoth Dor with her suburbs, and Kartan with her suburbs, three cities. All the cities of the Gershonites, according to their families, thirteen cities with their suburbs. And to the families of the children of Mirari, the rest of the Levites, out of the tribe of Zebulun, Yokneum with her suburbs, and Karta with her suburbs, Dimna with her suburbs, Nahalel with her suburbs, four cities. And out of the tribe of Reuben, Bezer with her suburbs, and Yahaza with her suburbs, Kedemoth with her suburbs, and Mepha'ath with her suburbs, four cities. 
and out of the tribe of God. Ramoth in Gilead with her suburbs, a city of refuge for the slayer, and Mahanaim with her suburbs, Heshbon with her suburbs, Piezer with her suburbs, four cities in all. So all the cities for the children of Merari by their families, which were remaining of the families of the Levites, were by their lot twelve cities. All the cities of the Levites within the possession of the children of Israel, forty-eight cities with their suburbs. These cities were every one with their suburbs round about them, in this manner were all these cities. And Yahweh gave to Israel all the land which he swore to give to their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt in them. And Yahweh gave them rest round about, according to all that he swore to their fathers, and there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. Yahweh delivered all their enemies into their hands. There failed not any of any good thing which Yahweh had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. End of chapter. Yahshua, chapter 22. Then Yahshua called the Reubenites and the Godites and the half-tribe of Manasseh and said to them, You've kept all that Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded you and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. You have not left your brethren these many days to this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of Yahweh your Elohim. And now Yahweh your Elohim has given rest to your brethren as he promised them. Therefore now, return you and get you to your tents and to the land of your possession, which Moses the servant of Yahweh gave you on the other side of Jordan. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses the servant of Yahweh charged you, to love Yahweh your Elohim and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. And so Yahshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their tents. Now to the one half of the tribe of Manasseh Moses had given possession in Bashan, but to the other half of it gave Yahshua among their brethren on this side, Jordan, westward. And when Yahshua sent them away also to their tents, then he blessed them. And he spoke to them, saying, Return with much riches to your tents, and with very much cattle, with silver and with gold and with brass and with iron, with very much raiment, divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. And the children of Reuben and the children of God and the half-tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel out of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan, to go to the country of Gilead to the land of their possession, whereof they were possessed, according to the word of Yahweh by the hand of Moses. And when they came to the borders of Jordan that are in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben and the children of God and the half-tribe of Manasseh built there an altar by Jordan, a great altar to see. And the children of Israel heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben and the children of God and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar over on against the land of Canaan in the borders of Jordan at the passage of the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel heard, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go to war against them. And the children of Israel sent to the children of Reuben and to the children of God and to the half-tribe of Manasseh to the Gan into the land of Gilead, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, and with him ten princes, of each chief house a prince throughout all the tribes of Israel, and each one was a head of the house of their fathers among the thousands of Israel. And they came to the children of Reuben, to the children of God, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, to the land of Gilead, and they spoke with them, saying, Thus says the whole congregation of Yahweh, What trespass is this that you've committed against the Elohim of Israel to turn away this day from following Yahweh, in that you've built you an altar, that you might rebel this day against Yahweh? Is the iniquity of Peor too small for us, from which we are not cleansed until this day, although there was a plague in the congregation of Yahweh, but that you must turn away this day from following Yahweh? And it will be seeing that you rebelled today against Yahweh, that tomorrow he will be angry with the whole congregation of Israel. Notwithstanding, if the land of your possession is unclean, then pass you over into the land of the possession of Yahweh, wherein Yahweh's tabernacle dwells, and take possession among us. But do not rebel against Yahweh, do not rebel against us, in building you an altar beside the altar of Yahweh, our Elohim. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass and the accursed thing, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel? And that man perished not alone in his iniquity. Then the children of Reuben and the children of God and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered and said to the heads of the thousands of Israel, Yahweh, El of Elohim, 
Yahweh El of Elohim, he knows, and Israel he shall know, if it is in rebellion or if in transgression against Yahweh, save us not this day. That we have built us an altar to turn from following Yahweh, or if to offer upon it burnt offering or meal offering, or if to offer peace offerings on it, let Yahweh himself require it. And if we have not rather done it for fear of this thing, saying in time to come, your children might speak to our children, saying, What have you to do with Yahweh Elohim of Israel? For Yahweh has made Jordan a border between us and you. You children of Reuben and children of God, you have no part in Yahweh. So shall your children make our children cease from fearing Yahweh. Therefore, we said, let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offering nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between us and you and our generations after us that we might do the service of Yahweh before him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifices and with our peace offerings so that your children may not say to our children in time to come, you've no part in Yahweh. Therefore did we say, that it shall be when they should so say to us or to our generations in time to come that we may say again, Behold, the pattern of the altar of Yahweh which our fathers made, not for burnt offerings nor for sacrifices, but it is a witness between us and you. Far be it from us that we should rebel against Yahweh and turn this day from following Yahweh to build an altar for burnt offerings and for meal offerings or for sacrifices, beside the altar of Yahweh our Elohim that is before his tabernacle. And when Phinehas the priest and the princes of the congregation and heads of the thousands of Israel which were with him heard the words that the children of Reuben and the children of God and the children of Manasseh spoke, it pleased them. And Phinehas the son of Eleazar the priest said to the children of Reuben, to the children of God and to the children of Manasseh, this day we perceive that Yahweh is among us because you have not committed this trespass against Yahweh. Now you have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of Yahweh. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest and the princes, returned from the children of Reuben and from the children of God out of the land of Gilead to the land of Canaan to the children of Israel and brought them word again. And the thing pleased the children of Israel. And the children of Israel blessed Elohim and did not intend to go up against them in battle to destroy the land in which the children of Reuben and God dwelt. And the children of Reuben and the children of God called the altar Ed, for it shall be a witness between us that Yahweh is Elohim. End of chapter. Yahshua chapter 23. And it came to pass a long time after that Yahweh had given rest to Israel, that from all their enemies round about, that Yahshua waxed old, stricken in age. And Yahshua called for all Israel, for their elders, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and said to them, I am old and stricken in age, and you have seen all that Yahweh your Elohim has done to all these nations because of you. For Yahweh your Elohim is he that has fought for you. Understand, I have divided to you by lot these nations that remain, to be an inheritance for your tribes, from Jordan, with all the nations that I have cut off, even to the great sea westward. And Yahweh your Elohim, he shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your sight, and you shall possess their land, as Yahweh your Elohim has promised to you. Be you, therefore, very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that you turn not aside there from to the right hand or to the left, that you come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their Elohim, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them nor bow yourselves to them, but instead cleave to Yahweh your Elohim as you've done till this day. For Yahweh has driven out from before you great nations and strong, and as for you, no man has been able to stand before you to this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for Yahweh your Elohim, he it is that fights for you, as he's promised you. Take, therefore, good heed to yourselves that you love Yahweh your Elohim. Else, if you do in any way, go back and cleave to the remnant of those nations, even those that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them, and go into them, and they to you. Know for a certainty that Yahweh your Elohim will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. But they shall be snares and traps to you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from off this good land, which Yahweh your Elohim has given you. And understand, this day I am going to the way of all the earth, and you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing fails 
of all the good things which Yahweh your Elohim spoke concerning you, all have come to pass to you, and not one thing has failed of it. Therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which Yahweh your Elohim promised you, so shall Yahweh bring upon you all evil things, until he's destroyed you from off this good land which Yahweh your Elohim has given you. When you've transgressed the covenant of Yahweh your Elohim, which he commanded you, and have gone out and served other Elohim, and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of Yahweh be kindled against you, and you shall perish quickly from off the good land which he's given you. End of chapter. Yahshua chapter 24. And Yahshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and they presented themselves before Yahweh. And Yahshua said to all the people, Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah the father of Abraham, and the mother, father of Nahor, and they served other elves. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. And I gave to Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave to Esau Mount Seir to possess. But Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. I sent Moses also, and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them, and afterward I brought you out. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. And when they cried to Yahweh, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt, and you dwelt in the wilderness a long season." And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side of Jordan, and they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, that you might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. And then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, rose and warred against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam. Therefore he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. And you went over Jordan and came to Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Girgashites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with your sword, nor with your bow. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you did not build, and you dwell in them. Of the vineyards and olive yards which you did not plant, do you eat? Now, therefore, fear Yahweh, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the Elohim which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and you serve Yahweh instead. And if it seem evil to you to serve Yahweh, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the Elohim which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the Elohim of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh. And the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake Yahweh to serve other Elohim. For Yahweh our Elohim, it is he that brought us up out and our fathers out of the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way in which we went among all the people through whom we passed. And Yahweh drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. For this reason will we also serve Yahweh, for he is our Elohim. And Yahshua said to the people, You cannot serve Yahweh, for he is a holy Elohim. He is a jealous El. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake Yahweh and serve strange Els, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he has done you good. And the people said to Yahshua, No, but we will serve Yahweh. And Yahshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen you, Yahweh, to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now for this reason put away, did he say, the strange elves which are among you, and incline your heart to Yahweh Elohim of Israel. And the people said to Yahshua, Yahweh, our Elohim, will we serve, and his voice will we obey. 
So Yahshua made a covenant with the people that day and sent them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Yahshua wrote these words in the book of the law of Elohim and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was near the sanctuary of Yahweh. And Yahshua said to all the people, Understand, this stone shall be a witness to us, for it has heard all the words of Yahweh which he spoke to us. It shall be therefore a witness to you, lest you deny your Elohim. And so Yahshua let the people depart, every man to his inheritance. And it came to pass after these things that Yahshua the son of Nun, the servant of Yahweh, died a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnathsira, which is in Mount Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Gaash. And Israel served Yahweh all the days of Yahshua, and all the days of the elders that overlived Yahshua, and which had known all the works of Yahweh that he had done for Israel. And the bones of Yosef, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, did they bury in Shechem in a parcel of ground which Yahweh bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of silver, and it became the inheritance of the children of Yosef. And Eleazar the son of Aaron died, and they buried him in a hill that pertains to Phinehas his son, which was given him in Mount Ephraim. End of chapter.